you grew up in the 70s like I did, then you're going to remember the 66 Batmobile. But the toys from today are a lot better than back then. Let's put some lights in this thing. Let's go through our parts list to see what we need and this video will focus on the lighting itself. We need the 66 Batmobile, we need 4 LEDs for the front, and we need a touch sensor and a AAA battery holder. And of course, we need some quick wire connections. Este video se centrará en la iluminación del vehículo. Veremos qué son las piezas que necesitamos. Necesitamos el Batimóvil del 66, cuatro luces LED para las luces del faro y necesitamos una caja para las pilas triple A, un sensor táctil y queremos conexiones sencillas. All parts used in this video today are from evandesigns.com. For video purposes, I have already disassembled the vehicle and I'm now going to show you what it is I did to take it apart. And it's really very simple. There are two hidden screws underneath the front tires, so you'll have to remove the tires to get to those screws. First of all, there are a few screws directly that are, are visible right at the bottom. Total of screws that are holding it together are 11 screws. Desmontar el vehículo es bastante sencillo, ya lo hice para propósito de video, solamente les mostraré dónde están y lo que hice. Hay 11 tornillos que sostienen toda la pieza, dos están escondidos debajo de las llantas que están delanteras. Necesita remover la goma o la llanta para tener acceso a esos dos tornillos, uno a cada lado. It opens up like a clamshell and it's easiest to open up the rear before you open up the front. Más sencillo y más rápido si abres el auto levantando la tapa trasera y entonces la parte delantera. So this vehicle for the price really lends itself very nicely to modifying it and there's plenty of room in here for wiring and batteries. Por el precio que se pide por este vehículo, realmente se recibe bien, por la razón de que se presta para hacer las modificaciones con alambrado y poner una pila al interior. So this touch sensor works so much better with a triple A or double A battery than this uh, 2032 battery holder. If you use this, you will need a actual separate switch and that just kind of defeats the purpose of having a touch sensor switch. El sensor táctil para encender el vehículo funciona mucho mejor con pilas de triple A o doble A en vez de una pila de 2032. Si usas esta necesitas un switch manual para prender y apagarlo y a la vez pues estás contrarrestando el propósito y uso de un tactor, un sensor táctil para encenderlo. So the touch sensor switch already comes pre-labeled what end goes to what. So it makes it much easier for an install. And as you can see, it's very sensitive as far as switching on and off. So it makes it very convenient to use it that way. So I had to design the headlamps myself out of 
UV resin and then grinding it down on one end to make it flat so it can give off that light in the direction that I need it and spread it out evenly. Utilizando resina logré hacer los faros y entonces coloqué una de las luces LEDs a cada uno y las pegué con resina nuevamente. Now you can most certainly buy this product out of China and it'll cost you uh, very, very inexpensively, maybe 10 bucks, but uh, I didn't want to wait three months for it to show up, so I decided to make my own. And the next step was to make a light test and then paint the back of the actual headlamps to uh, block off any spill going into the vehicle. I want all the light to go in one direction. Es por seguro que puedes comprar ese producto ya hecho desde China y son bastante económicos. Sin embargo, yo no quería esperarme tres meses para recibir el producto, entonces yo decidí hacerlo yo mismo. Ahora eh, sigue hacer una prueba de luz como ven aquí y entonces tendré que pintar los faros uh, por atrás de color plateado y negro para prevenir que haya luz que se despida al interior. Quiero toda la luz en una sola dirección. So I had to create a resin mold or a silicone mold and fill it with resin to create the grill. And I did this before drilling it out. That's the only way I could get that same texture for that grill. And then I just dry brush it to paint it back in. Utilizando el molde de silicone y llenándolo con resina, logré hacer la textura que es para los cubiertos de los faros. I guess the uh, scary and daring part of this is to actually cut into that plastic and you're gonna have to make it look the same on both sides. And if you do that, I recommend you cover up that bumper with some tape to protect that bumper from being scratched by the actual drill bit. Use a manual drill, not a Dremel to cut your first holes. Para hacer las perforaciones, recomiendo que cubras la defensa con una cinta para protegerlo, que no se vaya a rayar usando el taladro que estarás utilizando para hacer las perforaciones. Comienza con un taladro de mano para tener control sobre no ablandar o quemar el plástico. Now, once you cut your main holes, then you can come back and then you can use your Dremel or a hand file and then refine those edges so that they match and so that it's a nice, clean fit. Una vez hayas hecho las perforaciones iniciales, puedes regresar con una lima o un taladro que es electrónico y puedes entonces refinar las orillas para que queden bien las luces que vas a instalar. So we're going to mix up some orange resin to fill in the turn signals. And yes, we did drill those out, but we're going to have to put a piece of plastic, a styrene, glue it in to fill in the turn signals. Así es que con una resina color naranja, vamos a rellenar las perforaciones que hicimos en los señaleros. Y sí, les hicimos una perforación, pero vamos a cubrirlos con plástico al que está atrás, entonces rellenarlo con resina. Y sí, podría haberlo dejado en plástico negro. A este punto, pues, ya se hizo. Hay que rellenarlo. So using another silicone mold and then filling it with resin, this color orange, I created the texture for the turn signals. Utilizando otro molde de silicone y rellenándolo con resina, esta vez color naranja, pues logré hacer la textura para los faros, o sea, los señaleros del vehículo. Make sure you dry brush the grills that you have molded so that you have the appearance finalized as if those grills were actually perforated, allowing light to pass through. 
Antes de colocar los faros, asegúrate de pintar a brocha seca los moldes que son las cubiertas de los faros. Así te da la apariencia que tienes perforados esas piezas que transmiten luz. This is the AAA battery pack that I purchased and it came with a push button switch. I really don't care for it. So I'm going to remove that and reinsert or attach the touch sensor. Esta es la pila AAA que dará energía al vehículo y vino ya con un switch de botón, pero no me gusta. Prefiero el sensor táctil. So if you still want to use the push button switch, this is what it would look like. Personally, I don't care for it. I prefer the touch switch. But before I move on to that, let me show you what I did with the turn signal lights. I actually painted those in orange using Tamiya X26. That way we have a better color coming from these lights because they actually came in white. Así es que pinté las luces de los señaleros con Tamilla X26, una pintura color naranja que es translucente y nos dará un rendimiento de color naranja mucho mejor porque las luces vienen en blanco. Y también pinté los señaleros que instalé con ese mismo color Tamilla X26. This is what your vehicle should look like at this point. Your headlamps and your turn signals installed and all of these lamps are held in with UV resin. It is at this point that you can see how much light spillover you have and you can go in and paint it in black to keep that down. Una vez conectado, tu vehículo debe verse de esta manera con los faros y los señaleros y ves que si hay demasiada luz despidiendo por atrás, puedes pintarlo de negro. You can now see the harness from the headlamps and turn signals going to this quick connect wire that goes to the switch that of course is connected to the AAA battery. So this is what your vehicle should look like now with your headlamps and your turn signals installed. And remember, we used Tamiya X26 to get a better color rendition out of those turn signals. And right now, the vehicle is not complete, so the body is not fully attached. So you do see a gap on the corners there, but we still got a ways to go. Esta debe ser la apariencia de tu vehículo a este momento, pero todavía no terminado. Así que el vehículo no está sellado, por eso ves esas aberturas en las orillas. So the exhaust is a little bit trickier to show, but as you can see, this is a sequence of chase lights. These are the Knight Rider chase lights, and they lend themselves really well to the effect on this exhaust. Estas son las luces de secuencia que están en el escape y se prestan para el efecto que debe tener esta pieza del vehículo. So these nano LEDs, I installed one at a time using UV resin coming in from the inside of the actual vehicle or this piece. And then once installed, I inserted a diffuser or a small white disc on the inside of it to cover up those LEDs. I just want to see the effect, not the lights.
get back to the wiring and let me show you the layout. I kept my AAA battery holder because I want the power from this because it eliminates having to use a switch. I used the quick connect for the wiring loom from the exhaust and from the headlamps. Also on a quick connect going to the touch sensor you hear. And you can see here it's already labeled what goes to what. This is the power and it's on a quick connect. This is to the lights and that's on a quick connect. And then the touch sensor underneath looks like this. So you just touch it. There's no button. And it makes it so much more convenient. Let me show you. Very quick on and off. No moving parts. I love that. Observa como los faros y el alambrado del escape están conectados juntos al sensor táctil donde dice hacia luces. Esa es la primera etiqueta a la derecha. La etiqueta más arriba, esa es la etiqueta que apunta la conexión a la pila o la fuente de energía y conectado directamente al sensor táctil. So let's do a quick recap of what we've got here to keep it short. We have this 66 Batmobile, we have four LEDs that go to the headlamps and we got the chase lights in the actual exhaust and we have a touch switch, AAA battery holder and quick connect wires so that we can work quickly. Hagamos un breve repaso de lo que se necesita para este proyecto. El Batimóvil año 66. Necesitamos cuatro luces LED para los faros y señaleros y luces para el escape. Todo con una fuente de pila AAA, un sensor táctil y unas conexiones sencillas. Remember, this is only part one of this project. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see part two of this project. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of this video. Recuerda que esta es solamente parte número uno de este segmento en este proyecto. Si quieres ver el resto, entonces no se te olvide suscribirte a este canal, comentar y claramente te esperamos aquí la siguiente vez.